Hi everybody, I'm Chef Julia Dunaway and I'm here for our weekly Bean of the Week. So thanks for joining me. I know some of you attend on a regular basis and I really appreciate you. And for those of you who haven't attended before, every Monday I cook a bean from Rancho Gordo. I've never cooked one that wasn't Rancho Gordo, but maybe one day I would. And today it's the humble pinto bean. So pinto beans are kind of a staple bean. They go with everything. Most people grew up eating pinto beans. It's, you know, it's the bean most people can, they're familiar with. They know about pinto beans. It's not an oddball bean, like a lot of the Rancho Gordo beans nobody's ever heard of. I'm trying to get in sync with my laptop over here to get my uh, screen refreshed. So, excuse me for a second. But yeah, um, pinto beans are so versatile. <clears throat> They're good with everything and they don't seem to take that long. So I'm sorry, you guys, here it goes. All right, now I can see the comments. I've always got to get that adjusted, but uh, I see some of you are coming on. Karen, Dawn Field, Connie, Ellen, Thanks for watching and thanks. Some of you, I recognize your names that have signed up for the grilling class. So we'll actually use some of the things that we're using today in the grilling class. So I want them to be sure and monitor my comments. I see Tiffany Wilkerson says, pinto beans are one of my favorites. Well, thank you, Tiffany. I'm gonna move my computer over here where I don't have to crank my head to see it. So I like to monitor your comments but they don't always show up on the phone. So the phone scrolls a lot faster than I can read, but I can see the comments easier on my laptop. So I've been kind of trying to monitor the laptop and then I can uh, see what you're asking and cook at the same time. It's kind of like super multitasking. So I do the best I can given my limitations. So the pinto beans are done and you can, I put them here so you could see them move it down so you can see them even better. They're so beautiful. You know, they're just, um, they're kind of a, a humble bean, but they're creamy and soft. And there's something about freshly cooked beans, especially if they're, they have some good flavors. And so what I do to cook my beans is the same every time. So there's no magic recipe, nothing. The pinto beans are just made the same way I cook all beans, and I always include the recipe. It's on my YouTube channel. It is in the, um, uh, I always put the link to it, but it's like the basic Rancho Gordo bean recipe. So I just have that same recipe and use it over and over because I got it when I ordered all my Rancho Gordo beans. They said, you know, here's the way we cook our beans. We cook them on the stove. So they're in a pot on the stove and, um, they do them the same way every time. They either soak them just for a few hours. I see, I'm trying to read your comments up here too. Um, <clears throat> I see more people joining, but they cook them the same way every time. And Rancho Gordo does not believe in long soaking beans. So what that means is, you know, they soak their beans for um, five or six hours and that's it. They don't soak their beans for overnight or you know, 24 hours, except for garbanzo beans. Other than that, the beans are not soaked, except for about five or six hours. Hi, Terry Malnar. Uh, so, I soaked the beans this morning for about five or six hours. I think I put them on around 5.30 when I first got up, and I started cooking the beans at 11. So, at 11 o'clock, I put the beans on the stove in my pot with plenty of water, and I'm gonna move this out of the way so it's not steaming all over me. We can kind of see it from the side. Uh, you can't really see it, but it's here. Here, I'll put it where we can see the beans and not all the other stuff. So see, my pot of beans is right here. You can kind of see it. But I started cooking the beans this morning, or about 11 o'clock, <clears throat> and what I do is I put the beans, they're soaked, I rinse them after I've soaked them for five or six hours in plenty of water, rinse them, put them in here, cover this with, I use filtered water. So I use filtered water from the refrigerator. 
Uh, Michelle says, I have Rancho Gordo beans soaking right now. Jan Lowry, hi Jan, good to see you. So um, I, I bring the beans to a boil and I use filtered water just because my water where I live is not the best water in the world. So I use filtered water, cover them by a couple of inches, bring it to a boil and Rancho Gordo always recommends that you boil the beans for about, I think they say 10 to 15 minutes. Bring them to a boil and just let them boil for a while. So I do that. And once they've been boiling for, I usually do about 15 minutes. While they're boiling in the beginning, what I do is <clears throat> I get my skillet and I already have the beans boiling in the pan, in the pot which my pot is a four and a half quart Le Creuset cast iron enamel pot, which I love. My husband got it for me for Christmas and it was my first one. So I love this pot. I use it all the time because it's a pretty color, but any pot will do. Four and a half quart is the minimum size because for a pot, for a pound of beans, you barely have enough room in this four and a half quart pot. So, um, you know, I use that for the beans, but I, I put my skillet somewhere out of the way. Where did I put it? Well, it's in here somewhere. Oh, it's behind me. So I have a, a just a 12 inch skillet. And in the skillet, I cook my onions, carrots, celery, and garlic. So I just throw all these vegetables, one carrot, one celery rib, a chunk of onion, like maybe a half a cup of onion, and then a couple of cloves of garlic. And I put that in my skillet, brown it up really good, and then I add it to the beans. I see um, Ada Benton sent 150 stars. Stars are enabled. Stars are just a way that Facebook has put on here where you can buy stars, they're a penny each, and then they come to me and P Facebook sends me money once a month. They send me the money I earn from my events and then the stars, so. It's nice that they're doing that, but it's not a big deal. So don't feel pressured or compelled to have to send anything. They just throw it up there, but people always want to know what does that mean. Um, Julia Buttermore says, I'm in Mexico eating po veggie pozole soup. Glad I can connect. That is so cool. She's in Mexico eating real Mexican food, watching me cooking my Tex-Mex food. Now, I like that. I think that's pretty cool. So make your pinto beans or whatever beans you want to make you could have made black beans today i chose to make pinto beans because um, it's monday and i wanted to have a good supply of beans for the week and what i try to do is on mondays always cook a fresh pot of beans of some type usually i cook half a pound not a whole pound because it's usually just me eating beans maybe my husband will eat some but he always tells me and he's not plant-based, not 100%. He's working on getting better, but he will always tell me things like, uh, beans kind of upset my stomach. So he's kind of got excuses about beans that he claims that they're hard to digest. I think he just doesn't like them that much. So he still eats non-plant-based food, but I can't, he's an adult. I can't make him eat what I eat, but I try real hard to entice him to eat it. Sometimes he will, sometimes he won't. So, um, but I do make a pot of beans for myself. And so I try to eat the beans throughout the week. They last pretty, to me, about four days. And then like if I make them on Monday by Friday, Friday morning, I'm freezing them if I didn't use them. Uh, so Karen Phillips sent some stars, thank you. Brenda sent stars, thank you. So anyway, I freeze the beans if I haven't use them by that Friday morning, but just because I don't like to keep things in the refrigerator after about four days, five at the very most. And then um, I'll freeze them in little servings of one cup or one half cup, depends on what I'm gonna do with them. And that way I always have a serving of beans in the freezer because you know when you're busy and you still wanna eat your plant-based food, it's always helpful to have some beans in serving sizes. And the Rancho Gordo beans freeze really well and they taste good after they're frozen. I just let them sit and defrost out on the counter. Like I'll take them out in the morning um, when I go walk. If I'm gonna have them for lunch, I'll take some out and set them out while I go for my walk. And, and by the time I get back, I'll just put them in the refrigerator. Uh, or you can just keep them in the refrigerator and then warm them up. I don't like to stick them in the microwave because I think 
a lot of times uh, stuff will get overcooked fast in the microwave. So however you want to do it, you can cook them on the stove top, add a little water or veggie broth and warm them up. So there's all kinds of different ways you can reheat your beans, but the important thing is you have some to reheat because you know the beans, if you're following the daily dozen, which is what I eat, it requires you to eat three servings of beans a day. That's three half cup servings of beans. How are you gonna get all these beans in your diet? It's hard. Sometimes I eat hummus. Um, I buy no, no oil hummus from Whole Foods sometimes. I make my own. Uh, you can eat edamame. You can eat uh, tofu. Tofu is made from soybeans. So you have all these different things that count as beans, but it's still hard to get a lot of beans in your diet if you're not used to it. I'm getting used to it now after a year. I started following the Daily Dozen a year ago and really trying to you know, eat nothing but the Daily Dozen for the past year. And so I've been pretty successful at doing that, but it is, you know, it's not easy. So what am I gonna do today? I'm gonna take our pinto beans and I'm gonna make something with them. But first I have to let you say hello to my assistants because they like to be a part of what I'm doing. So you need to see them. I hope you're a dog lover. If you're not, just indulge me for a moment. I have my two assistants and they blend in with the rug, I think. Mochi and Taro. Mochi's on the bottom and Taro is above. And they're just sleeping. And that's what they do. They come in here into my kitchen classroom. This is my kitchen classroom and the reason I have the camera facing at an odd angle is because this time of day if you look behind me you see outside well that window makes this really bright glare right on my face in a weird way so I have to kind of turn the camera in a way where it doesn't show my full kitchen because if I turned it the other way the window is behind me and that creates an awful terrible glare. So, you know, I have to set it up the way it works for me and I wanna stay in my nice, bright kitchen classroom because I like it in here. It's bright and airy. Uh, let's see, Tiffany said, I was just wondering what your two fur babies are doing. Where your two fur babies are, just adorable. They're always here with me, I swear. They, if I, whatever room I'm in, they're gonna be in there. They will follow me everywhere, I have to, if I'm going into the bathroom, I have to shut the door. They'll come in there. They'll go anywhere you go. They're boxers. Boxers want to be with their people. If you ever, if you're lonely and want a companion dog to keep you company and sit with you when you watch TV and follow you everywhere you go, get a boxer because that's what they'll do. All right, Michelle sent, uh, posted some hearts and paws. She must be a real dog lover. Uh, so some of you are dog lovers and my dogs are so important to me. I have to mention them every time. I'm sorry if you get sick of it. So back to the pinto beans. We made, I made a pot of pinto beans. Now what am I gonna do with them? I have this whole pound of pinto beans I cooked up. So I'm sure you're wondering, well, how does she eat all those beans? Well, eating all these beans helped me lose 30 pounds in the year 2020. So, you know, instead of eating vegan junk food and you know, a lot of uh, other stuff that I used to eat. I started eating a lot more whole foods like beans and vegetables and different grains and lots of salads and fruit and oatmeal. And I quit eating processed food. And I had, didn't really eat that much of it, but it doesn't take much to put on weight. So I lost my weight and beans are a big part of what I eat. So I make the beans and then I do different things with them. So for today, what we're gonna make is a burrito bowl. So I have my bowl already ready. So this will be a meal for me later today, probably my dinner. I have my brown rice, about half a cup, because I measure out my grains. I eat three half cup servings of grains a day. I don't want to overdo it. I used to, uh, I know there are some programs that encourage you to eat unlimited amounts of grains. And for me, what that did was that kept me from eating everything else because I would fill up on all the grains and I wouldn't eat enough vegetables. So now I kind of say, okay, I'll have a smaller amount of grains so that I'll eat plenty of other things that are not quite as uh, caloric or as dense as the grains. And that would encourage me to eat more raw vegetables. So I'm going to put um, about a half a cup of my beans on my brown rice. And I did not 
purposely didn't put a lot of broth in my bowl because I didn't want to right now, but some people really enjoy, and I'll take you, give you a close-up of this. When you're making these Rancho Gordo beans, they make a really good, rich bean broth. And um, you don't have to put salt in your beans, but I do. I usually put a little bit of salt in them because, you know, I don't like them to be completely bland, and I, I like salt. So I use a little bit, half a teaspoon or something. Uh, but it, the garlic, carrot, celery, onions, and a little bit of salt gives you this delicious bean broth. So the bean broth is wonderful. And Tiffany says, um, your recipe makes the most perfect rice. Okay, my rice recipe, and I'm not gonna really go over it today, but I make pasta style brown rice. And what that is, is I take a big pot bigger than this boil the water, put the rice in the boiling water, let it boil for about 30 minutes, just loose in a bunch of water. Then I'd put it in a colander, get all the water drained, put the rice back in the pot, put the lid on for 10 minutes, and then the brown rice is fluffy. It's not stuck together and gluey, because I used to think brown rice was kind of gross, especially like sometimes from the Instant Pot or even a rice cooker the rice gets kind of sticky in a not a pleasant way. So my brown rice method makes fluffy, delicious, kind of a, a nice textured brown rice. So I've got the brown rice, I've got the, the beans, and then another, what the burrito bowl, how I made it is, I have an ebook called 50 Recipes in 50 Days. And I have a recipe in here called Chipotle at Home. And, um, uh, Karen says, do you soak your rice? Uh, oh, and Michelle said, that's how my Italian nani makes rice too. See, you can make white rice like that too. Pasta style, she's Italian. Uh, do I soak my rice? No, I don't soak it, I just throw it in the water. So I wrote an ebook called 50 Recipes in 50 Days and you can get this on my website and I can put a link to it um, on this live video so you could look it up later. But there's a recipe in here called Chipotle at Home and when I developed that recipe, I was frustrated because when you go to a Chipotle restaurant, a lot of their stuff has oil in it. And there's no option really for me. It's like, no, oh, I know they put oil in everything. I don't really want to go there. So I thought I'll just make my own. I can make a rice, beans, pinto beans. And then some of the things I would get at Chipotle would be, I would always want to get grilled vegetables. And they have a big vat of grilled vegetables there. But they're oily, you guys. They're cooked with oil. So we can make our own grilled vegetables. And these are my grilled vegetables that I made the other day because I'm having a grilling class on Saturday. And so I was, show, I was taking pictures of my grilled food, so I happen to have a bunch of grilled stuff. So I have grilled peppers, grilled squash, grilled mushrooms, grilled onions, grilled zucchini, my zucchini got hidden by my onion. I've even got some nice pieces of grilled jalapeno pepper. And I wanted to show you that this time of year, my garden, every time I go outside, I'm bringing in, I just brought these in, I'm bringing in all these zucchini and squash. So uh, one thing about grilling vegetables is I can take all of these and grill them, and then I can have a big stock of grilled vegetables for my burrito bowls. So in your burrito bowl, you can put beans, you can put things like grilled vegetables, any kind. So on this one, I think I'll put, let me move you where you can see it. I think I'll put some bell peppers, uh, yellow and red, uh, some onion. I'm gonna cut the onion up a little bit, it's kind of big. And these, uh, I have a technique for grilling vegetables where they come out really tender and they don't get all burnt, they don't get all uh, dried out. They come out super moist and tender, and that's one of the things I'm gonna be teaching in the class, how to make grilled vegetables that taste really good. I love spicy jalapenos, so I'm definitely gonna put some strips and pieces of hot grilled jalapeno pepper on here. And grilled, something about the grilled hot peppers, it kind of mellows them a little bit, it makes them you know, they're still hot, but not as hot. And then, get my towel over here. What else can I put on here? Well, I have some corn. 
I just took some frozen corn, I'm gonna spoon it over here, and I warmed it up in the microwave for a couple minutes. It doesn't need that long. And then I can just put some corn. You know, if you go to Chipotle, they have that corn salsa. It's really good. And I have a recipe for that in my ebook, uh, a copycat corn salsa from the Chipotle corn salsa, but I didn't make it today because this is an example of something you throw together with your bean of the week. Throw your beans over your rice and see what you have available. There's some pretty birds. I have to show you this is where I'm, what I'm watching. If you see me looking out the window, I have a bird feeder right here. It's, it's up here in the thing. And there are all these birds that are coming and going because this time of year, the birds are like crazy around here. There's so many of them, but they're beautiful. Just bright colors. Anyway, um, you know, I've got these things. I'm trying to make something quick and easy, not too complicated. I have the grilled vegetables already. I'm not gonna use all of them. I just put some onions on here. If I wanted to, I could add some zucchini and squash and other things, but I'm gonna keep it kind of simple and just add the onions and bell peppers for now because that's a common thing that most of you would have. And then I've got the corn, which I love corn. I think it's good. And another thing, I made this, I literally made this in 10 minutes. And what this is is my, and it's in the, the ebook, 50 recipes. In, in the uh, ebook, it calls it tempeh crumbles. So, um, but what I made this morning was tofu crumbles, kind of a Tex-Mex tofu crumbles, because when you go to Chipotle, they have, uh, what do they call it, sofritos, or, you know, different things. Let's see, somebody's saying, nope, I thought there was a message. So I decided to take tofu, because I have, my husband keeps me stocked in tofu, so I have like seven boxes of extra firm tofu in my refrigerator at all times because he goes to Walmart and he always believes that I need more tofu. So he always gets a couple boxes. Well, now I've got like seven boxes. So I drained and pressed the tofu this morning when I soaked my beans so it would be nice and dry. And I just crumbled it up and I put some uh, tahini and soy sauce and a couple things on it but what I also put on it that I just happened to have was I have these Fresh Jacks. I ordered a bunch of their seasoning blends and I ordered their taco Mexican blend. So remember, I was in a big hurry because I was trying to get ready for this and my son was calling me and it was just a hectic day. So, you know, I threw the tofu in my air fryer rack. I put all the tahini soy sauce and coconut aminos and Worcestershire sauce in my 50 recipes book. And then instead of all the different spices, I just covered it with taco seasoning and said, that's good enough. And I stuck it in the air fryer for 10 minutes on 375, and that left me with this beautiful um, tofu crumbles. And these taste wonderful. Where's my tongs? They taste, you know, they've got that kind of chewy, delicious texture that tastes great with beans and rice. So I'll put some on there, and I can save these for other meals. So... You know, if I had to feed three or four more people, I would have plenty. Let's see if there's any new comments. Feel free to ask me questions. I'm kind of reloading this to see if any other comments are coming up because I'm not seeing any. So if you have any questions or anything you want to ask me, be sure and put it in the comments. And I can, I'm can. i doing my best to read them so I can answer your questions during the live video. So uh, I've got the tofu crumbles with the kind of taco flavors. I've got, okay, Gail says, what if you don't have an air fryer? Oh, if you don't have an air fryer, just put it in the regular oven at 375. It just takes longer. So maybe like 25 minutes or 30 minutes. Tiffany says, have you experimented with pavano green sauce for Mexican food? Taco Del makes a great dona sauce, but it might be full of oil. Yeah, I have made some green sauces in some of my classes, so yeah, green sauces can be really good. Um, so yeah, use a regular oven if you don't have an air fryer. Then let's talk about other things we can put on here. We can put some avocado on here. And I have one that I used yesterday. And I'm just going to cut some little cubes. We could make our own guacamole. So you could just take your avocado and mash it up and add some 
uh, pepper and garlic powder and un red onions and lime juice and you know anything that you think would be good in guacamole I'm kind of simple with mine as long as the avocados are fresh just a little lime juice and garlic usually is all I want in mine I don't like to put a lot of different things in the guacamole because I think it a good avocado doesn't require a lot of ingredients and if your avocado is overripe or not a good avocado, then it's almost like people are trying to cover up the taste of their avocado. So if it's a good avocado, it doesn't need much. So I'm not gonna put a lot of the avocado on there, just a, a little bit, because I usually don't eat more than about a fourth of an avocado at a time. So I've got the avocado on here, and then we can season it with some salsa. So I have a Mateo's medium salsa, which is one I like. So I'll, I'll use that one. And you know, if you go to Chipotle, and I'm just gonna put it kind of in the corner because I don't wanna put it on everything right now. If you go to Chipotle, they have different sauces, green sauces and red sauces. I don't have any green sauces today. Now, um, in, in the kitchen, and I'm gonna go get it, it won't take but a second. gotten a couple of ingredients. I had uh, made this sauce a couple of days ago and it's a it's like a chipotle or um, a spicy mayo sauce and I made it for my grilling class so you know it was like a hamburger sauce for a veggie burger but it, you know I have some left and it's still really good. I tasted it this morning and I thought this would be a really good ingredient to put on my burrito bowl. So I'm gonna put it over my tofu, because I don't wanna put it over everything, but I think it would go really well with the tofu. It's got a cashew base, and that's one of the recipes in the grilling class, but you know, you could find a recipe or, you know, of mine, I'm sure somewhere, for a, like a spicy mayo. And then I have my cilantro. This is kind of how I keep the cilantro fresh. I dry it really well, see it? I dry it really well. I had a huge bunch for something a couple days ago. And so I dry it and I have it, I'm growing it in my garden. And then I put it in between some paper towels and put it in a Ziploc bag so that it stays fresh and that keeps it from getting all um, soggy and wilted. So if cilantro goes bad, that's what you wanna do. Oh, somebody's asking me, what do you have growing under your grow lights? I'll show you in just a second. So I put some fresh cilantro on top. I've got my little spicy cashew mayo, fresh cilantro from my garden. And then I've got my little messy stuff here, little messy pieces of avocado. So you saw what I put on here, I put, um, you know, the jalapenos, the corn, the grilled peppers, grilled onions, the chorizo or the tofu, Tex-Mex tofu with the spicy mayo, little salsa, fresh jalapenos. Doesn't that look good? This was just a thrown together thing with leftovers, you guys. Rice from the freezer, beans are the only thing I made today. Well, besides the tofu, but I usually have that tofu in the freezer. So with my humble pot of beans, I threw together this beautiful burrito bowl. And it's fashioned after a Chipotle bowl, you know, but I don't go to Chipotle because I don't wanna eat all the oil. So I can have this instead. This is much better to me. So, you know, this is something you can make. Now what's in my things under the grow lights here? I think you can see them. I've got uh, a table here with grow lights and I've got little plants that are starting to come up. This is one of them. And this one is a kabocha squash. So um, this is just a way that I grow seedlings because ultimately I plant them in my garden. So I'll turn the camera around just to show you. 
out here that I have been busy growing stuff out in the garden. I'll even take you outside. So ultimately, house, but sorry about that. It starts to, to go out. Okay, so, so if I get away from the house, my signal goes out, so I'm going to have to stay close to the house. But you can see I have an herb garden over here off to the side. That's the herb garden kind of off to the side. And uh, this is the one of the garden towers where I got the cilantro, a bunch of herbs out here. And so anyway, that's what I do with the seeds is I grow little plants and then ultimately, I'll turn you back around, they end up back, they end up out in the garden. So I'm having a lot of trouble this year because we keep having these horrible rains. And every time we have a bad rain, all my plants are drowning. So I've had some of my plants just, you know, drown in the rain. And then I have, I've been replanting seeds to try to get more of the same plants. Hopefully this time my squash plants won't get drowned by the seeds. So, oh, and I don't think you saw the real herb garden is out here. So right outside this door is a whole garden full of, and you can't really see it that well from here, but trust me, there are so many herbs in that little patch and strawberries in the front. But I can pick anything from tarragon to thyme to oregano to sage, parsley, dill, um, rosemary, basil, just about any herb, I can just walk out the door and pick it, which makes it, oh, Michelle heard a lot of birds singing. Uh, let's see, I'd like to hear more about how to make the tofu crumbles. I have an air fryer, but I've never used it for tofu. Well, like I said, with the tofu crumbles, I just took, uh, I drained the tofu and pressed it and crumbled it up and put it in a bowl. And then my recipe is really simple. It's a tablespoon of low sodium soy sauce, a tablespoon of liquid or coconut aminos, tablespoon of vegan Worcestershire sauce, a tablespoon of tahini, and then spices, whatever spices you have. And I used um, taco blend, okay? But you could use anything like that, paprika, cumin, chili powder, garlic salt, onions, um, garlic powder, not garlic salt, garlic powder, garlic pepper, um, chili pepper, just anything that you want. I just kind of, you know, make up different things because look at my spices are all here, you guys. See this right behind you, the big spice rack? I have all my favorite spices there. So I just kind of look at the spice rack a lot of times and, and pick spices that sound appealing. Put that in your tofu, crumble it up. It's crumbled up kind of small. And then you just put it on the rack. And I'm, I crumbled it up a little too small and some of the crumbles went below my rack, but that's okay because these are good too. The ones that fell down below, they also cooked and so they can be used on top of, you know, burrito bowls or whatever. So bigger is probably a little bit better because then it won't fall through your air fryer basket. So crumbles in the air fryer can be a little more difficult because, you know, mine has grates, they're gonna fall through. But I was in a big hurry. Normally I cook the crumbles on an oven sheet tray. Okay, let's see, somebody else. Terry Lostetter sent 100 stars. Thank you, Terry. So just be bold with your tofu crumbles. Just tr crumble up tofu, put seasonings on it, put it on a, a baking sheet, stick it in the oven at 375, let it cook for 25 to 30 minutes, and then you have delicious tofu crumbles. You can put them on your pasta. Uh, my daughter made me a delicious spaghetti dinner for Mother's Day, and she made her own version of Italian tofu uh, crumbles. And she made a really good tomato sauce. And then she just put the um, pasta, her homemade red tomato sauce with no oil, and then she sprinkled something that looked just like that, but it was Italian seasonings on top of the sauce. And then it was like this most delicious spaghetti dinner and it wasn't hard to make. 
So it's easy, you can do it. Uh, everyone use your pinto beans, which was our bean of the week. So you can see the big pot of pinto beans. Use your pinto beans, make a, a nice burrito bowl and enjoy that. Put whatever you have sitting around. If you have leftover vegetables, grilled vegetables, avocado, corn out of the freezer. You could, we could have put tomatoes on here. Just about anything. You could put sliced jalapeno peppers. And then I got out some, I had some tofu, I mean, tofu, I had some cashew sauce that I made the other day it was kind of a little spicy uh, veggie burger sauce, but it's, you know, it's a kind of a spicy cashew sauce. I had some salsa. You can see I've been, my husband uses this all the time. So I put that on there and it just made this beautiful bowl. Now I'm gonna put this in the refrigerator and eat it later because I'm supposed to go work out. Um, do you consider tofu to be a whole food and not processed? I know it's not vegan junk food. Well, tofu is not considered to be, uh, it's considered to be a whole food as far as Dr. Greger and I follow the How Not to Die and the Daily Dozen. And he, um, He's kind of, he's of the opinion that tofu is okay because it's just made from soybeans. It's not like uh, some of the soy, isolated soy protein products where they make burgers and little patties and different things, but that's processed because they take isolated soy protein powder or whatever, they take a part of a soy product and they mix it with other things. But with tofu, tofu is nothing more then, then soybeans that you cook until they can be made into like a soy milk. And then you take the soy milk and add a coagulant to it, which is something made of seaweed. And that makes the soy milk turn into a block. And I've made homemade tofu before, so it's exactly that. It's nothing more than soybeans. The liquid from soybeans turned into a, a coagulated square. Uh, Cindy says, did you add Rotel tomatoes in the beans? No, I did not. Um, my beans this time are nothing more than Rancho Gordo beans cooked the traditional way. They have nothing in them but garlic and onions, a little bit of carrots and celery. Because my flavors for my burrito bowl are coming from the salsa and all the other ingredients. So I did not add any flavors to the beans. And also because I'm making these beans for the week. And these are gonna be beans I put in the freezer to add on top of salads and in other dishes. So I don't want them to have any strong flavors. I didn't want them to be like charro beans. Uh, I think one of our recent demos, I made charro beans, which had Rotel and other things in the beans. And that made, they were kind of like a Tex-Mex bean that would be eaten like that, they were from season. But these beans, I just wanted to keep them plain because I'm gonna use them for a lot of recipes. So anyway, uh, I believe tofu is a good food. Um, Dr. Greger will say he prefers tempeh over tofu, but I'm not a big tempeh lover. I just don't like it. And I grew up, my mother's Japanese, I'm half Japanese, and I grew up eating tofu all my life. So I love tofu, it's something we ate all the time. We had miso soup with tofu. We had tofu, we ate it cold in the summertime. We had tofu in all kinds of stuff. So tofu was a natural food for me to eat in a plant-based diet. So I love tofu, but whenever I eat tempeh, I always have this feeling that I don't like it as much as I like tofu. It's got kind of that strange fermented taste or something. So I'm not the lover of tempeh, but some people love it. Uh, Audra says, are there any beans you find don't freeze well? I'm thinking I had bad luck freezing garbanzos. Uh, I, I didn't have bad luck freezing garbanzos, especially if you're gonna use them for hummus, because they, they're gonna be ground up anyway. It could be just the, the type of beans that you got. Um, but yeah, it, you know, I could see where garbanzos might not freeze all that well. I don't think white beans are as good frozen. I think they tend to be mushy when you reheat them. So what happens if you freeze your beans and when you get them out, you know, like you want your beans when they're cooked, I'll show you. You don't want them to be falling apart. You know, cooked beans, 
should not be falling apart. They should be whole when they're done. So, you know, they should look still look like the bean, okay? They shouldn't be all smashed up with the skins all separated. If, if they're like that, I don't wanna put that back in there. If they're like that, they're probably a little overcooked. So if you freeze your beans and they've been cooked properly, they'll probably freeze pretty good. But if they're overcooked, they might get that kind of mushy texture. Um, Nadine says, I missed the beginning of this cooking lesson. Can I access the recipe or the video on your website? Well, I, I um, put these on and they're saved here on my Facebook page. So at the end, when I finish the recording, it re I mean, when I finish it, I leave it on as a recording. So you should be able to find it. Just uh, when you go to my Facebook page, there's a little tab that says more. And when you click on it, it ha should have a little tab for videos and click on videos and all my Bean of the Week videos are there. I typically put them on YouTube. So if you want to watch a Bean of the Week video, most of them are on YouTube. So go to my YouTube channel and they're all labeled with a type of bean. And I'll put this one on there. I just need to remember to do it. Uh, Mary Ann says, my friend lent me the Rancho Gordo Vegetarian Kitchen and I'm loving it. I need to order some Rancho Gordo beans. Yeah, that's a pretty good book, the Vegetarian Kitchen Cookbook. They have a lot of recipes. Most of them have a whale. So you have to, you know, kind of redo the recipes, which I, I do look at that book sometimes and come up with recipes. So just be aware that the recipes have a high oil content. But yeah, um, freeze your beans. But here's one thing you can do. If you freeze your beans and they don't come out very good, like they're kind of too mushy and soft, you can always make pureed bean soup. So you could take your beans and add some homemade or store-bought vegetable broth and some more vegetables, like cook up some onions and whatever, bell peppers and anything, carrots, anything you like, and then add your beans, and then take a stick blender, an immersion blender, or your Vitamix blender, or your food processor, whatever you have, and put the beans and all the ingredients in there and puree it. And then it doesn't matter what the beans look like. They'll taste delicious. You could add fresh herbs, you could add mushrooms, you could add um, anything you like, for other fresh vegetables. And you can have part of the soup be pureed beans and then add some solid things for some texture. So yeah, don't despair if your beans don't freeze perfectly. Just, you know, make some other dish with them. So I guess that's all for today. This was Bean of the Week, but it turned into a lot more garden tour, uh, vegetable growing tour, say hi to the dogs. I'm sorry, I'm not capable of doing one thing. I guess I'm too scattered, but I did want to show you that I do have a delicious burrito bowl, kind of like a chipotle bowl, made with my delicious pinto beans and ingredients I have around the house. And this is absolutely delicious. If you have something like this to eat, people should not feel sorry for you for eating a plant-based diet because I enjoy this more than I ever enjoyed eating those uh, bowls I used to get that would have dried up over seasoned meat in them. This to me tastes a lot better. So maybe you'll like it too. And I will put the link to the Chipotle at home recipe. The full recipe is in the book, 50 recipes in 50 days. This came out last year, but as you can see, look at all the, the tabs in it. I printed out my ebook and I always use this ebook to make food. That's like my, these are my recipes, but I go in there all the time and say, now, how did I make that? Those barbecue jackfruit sliders or whatever, you know? So all of my comfort food and all of my desserts and stuff are in this 50 recipe thing. So I find myself using it a lot. And a lot of the people that follow me will tell me the same thing. And they'll say, oh, I get lots of recipes out of there. So it's, it's you know, it's $20, but you use it a lot. It's worth it to me if I bought something that I used as much as I use this one. So thank you all for watching, and let's see, I don't see any other questions. So I will be back here Friday. On Fridays, I do the Friday recap every Friday at 3 o'clock, talking about how to incorporate the daily dozen into your everyday eating and, and you know things that I face during the week, things that went well, things that didn't, and there's usually something where I learned an important lesson because I messed up.
that always happens too. I'm trying really hard to, you know, stick with this and it's been over a year. Tomorrow will be one year since I started eating nothing but the daily dozen, meaning eating a whole food plant-based diet. Uh, let's see, do you sell the spiral bound 50 recipes? No, I do not sell any printed out versions of my eBooks. I just, you know, sent it over to Staples and had them print it out for me, which costs extra money, I know, but that's the only way I, you know, I'm better with printed things than eBooks myself. Of course, you know, it's probably because I'm as old as your grandma, so that's kind of my thing is reading stuff. But um, <clears throat> I do the Friday recap for people that are trying to follow the 21 day challenge, which is on my support group, Chef Julia support group. If you're not a member of my support group, anybody can join. You have to answer the question though. People try to join, but they don't answer the question. So answer the question on there. Why do you wanna join? And then on the um, support group, I post things about the 21 day challenge and the 21 day challenge is where you eat the daily dozen for 21 days. That's all it is. There's no fee or anything. You don't have to buy anything. It's just me telling you what I eat every day for 21 days so that you can eat a whole food plant based diet and know what somebody else who follows it eats. So over the course of the last year, it's been over a year now. Well, tomorrow will be a year. I managed to lose. Well, I lost 20 pounds since I started the, the uh, 21 day challenge a year ago, but at 5'7", I weigh 140 pounds, so I don't really wanna lose any more weight. Um, you can't really see me there very well, but if you could see me, I'm at my goal weight. Um, I don't wanna get too thin at my age and look you know, like something's wrong with me. So anyway, I'm okay with the weight I'm at, but I've maintained it since the beginning of the year. So for, let's say four or five months, I've maintained my weight at 140 pounds. That is hard because in the past, anytime I did any kind of weight loss, which I lost the weight last year, then the very next thing that would happen is I would start eating the same stuff again and gain it all back. But I haven't gained it back because I haven't changed the way I eat. I keep eating the daily dozen every day and very rarely do I deviate from it. So my weight is not coming back on. I'm still, in fact, I could probably lose a little bit more. If I'm not careful, I lose more. And I really don't wanna lose any more weight. So I have to kind of make myself keep up with it because I'm so active walking five miles a day that it's easy for me to keep my weight off, but it's also easy for me to lose more. And I don't want that to happen. So that's the 21 day challenge. It's on the Chef Julia support group. It started today, so it's Monday. It's day one of the 21 days. So this is a perfect time to start the 21 day challenge. Eat your three servings of beans a day, three servings of grains, two servings of greens, vegetables, fruit, a little bit of nuts and seeds and some spices and exercise 90 minutes a day and drink plenty of fluids. That's it, that's all the 21 day challenge is and other people are doing it too. So they share what they're doing, how they're doing, recipes, and then I post every day. I will post all the meals I've had that day. And then you can look at what I'm eating. And you know, it's not, not always perfect, but at least it gives you an idea of what someone eats on the 21 day challenge. So I hope you do that. And the, uh, lastly, the grill class, grilling class is on Saturday and I will be teaching a class on how to make things like really good grilled vegetables that are not burnt and uh, inedible, but still moist. And I'll be teaching how to make some really good Mexican street corn, a really good burger recipe, one of the best ones I've made that holds up on the grill. And that's hard to do because when you put veggie burgers on the grill, usually they crumble into little pieces because they're, uh, the consistency of them is not made for the grill. So I had to come up with one that grills well. So I did. And I will also be making the fajitas, which is part of the grilled vegetables, and then packets. So um, packets traditionally were foil packets. But I'm going to try to not, you know, 
stress making foil packets because a lot of people don't want to use foil anymore. So we can use parchment paper, but on the grill, I'm coming up with different ways that we can make the equivalent of foil packet vegetables on the grill without using the foil packet. And I'll explain more in the class, but I've got different techniques that I've kind of put together that work well. So anyway, uh, that class still has room. I can uh, put a link to it in the bottom of the comments here. So after I get off and share this, I'll do that. But everybody enjoy having the burrito bowl, pinto beans, any kind of beans you wanna make. Every Monday I come on here and we make some kind of beans. So I hope to see you next Monday or Friday at the recap or Saturday at the class. So many opportunities to make whole food plant-based things that taste good and uh, I appreciate you attending. So bye everybody. I don't see any other questions to answer. Oh, Terry says she's looking forward to the grilling class on Saturday. Well, thanks for signing up, Terry. I appreciate it. Bye-bye everybody.